June always thought of family first. When I was first married, her home was the usual place for family gatherings and parties. June was not much of a drinker, but if she had one too many, you would always know as she would try a cigarette. Very funny to watch. June was always interested in what others thought and she cared about people and was always showing them her concern and interest. She knew Walter liked fish and would have us over for a big fish dinner where she cooked different types of white fish and would make sure I had chickens so I was included. It is difficult to single out just one memory of my mom. However, I think this one highlights a piece of her personality. We were doing a road trip to Calgary a few years back for mom to visit her cousins. On the way back, we stopped at Banff and took the gondola up Sulphur Mountain. Mom's hip was already sore at that time, but she was determined she wanted to do it. So we stood in a long lineup and had a standing but breathtaking trip up the mountain. Up top, there were lengthy wooden pathways and observation decks. After some time, Mum said she would like to rest, and I could go on and finish the walk. I went to the end and back quickly, but found her ahead of where I had left her. She said she just wanted to see around the next corner. Her curiosity just wouldn't allow her to stay put. Been thinking of Mum a lot the last few days, mostly about how she loved us all. Her children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, extended family and friends. How she loved for us to come to visit and hated to see us go. I think that's what I'll remember most, that love. The feeling of being loved and wanted. I'll think I'll remember it every day for the rest of my life. I have so many memories of mom that I wouldn't know where to begin to put it together and express it in this video. So I would say that the memories come flooding back and I am left with feelings of love and caring, fun. Mom liked to go to the beach, have picnics, I remember her teaching me to swim and always wanting to have a swim together. So that was really good times being young. Uh, lots of fun in the house and in the yard. And in the later years, in my teen years, uh, for the most part, uh, a, a good relationship, although mom was a tough taskmaster and um, you know, kept me under control as much as she could. Um, and then as a young adult and then a, a young mother myself, she was supportive and helped me as much as she could. And we ha had um, many, many times in this house, in this kitchen, where I'm making this video right now. So I thought that would be appropriate. And, um, and then the later years of just enjoying her friendship and her many uh, idiosyncrasies as she got older and, and so did I. So um, I'll just finish by saying that I love mom very much and I will always miss her, but I'm glad that she um, was able to finish her lifetime in this house. And I'll just also throw in at the end there that I uh, got uh, we all kind of got kicked out of this house at various times in these kitchen parties when mom just about had enough but she was a really good sport and uh, I will always love her and miss her. As the youngest of five siblings and after the death of our father it seemed that it fell on me as the one child still left in elementary school to be dragged along on all of mom's trips. They could be places in BC, the Western States, Tijuana, and even UK. But often I was less than thrilled to have to go along with the old folks. And keep in mind, mum was younger than I am now. And I'm sure I often let her know what I thought about it. However, as the years passed, I began to understand how lucky I had been to be able to participate in those adventures. 
in the mid 70s i don't think there were many people kids from north burnaby that would have had these opportunities not only did i get to see different towns cities and countries but also build memories of time shared with my mother and for that i thank you mom and love you always greg I feel really fortunate to be able to call June my mom. Uh, she was a wonderful mother-in-law. Uh, I married into the family and she just uh, made things so much easier for me, welcomed me with uh, open arms. Uh, we just used to have a little bit of an inside joke when she would introduce me to uh, friends and family you didn't see very often. I was always referred to as her favorite daughter-in-law, which is really nice, but uh, I am her only daughter-in-law, so cool figure. Mum was always fun to be around. Uh, quite often she would come on our road trips with us in the summertime when we went to visit uh, Kathy or Sandy and uh, she was such a lot of help with the kids when they were little. Um, we're all going to miss her very much. Love you Mum. Hi, I'm Arlene Cole, the first cousin of June's from Calgary. I have known of June for most of my life, as she is not only a cousin, but was born on my mother's 12th birthday, June 15, 1928. And then on June's 12th birthday, Adrian and I were born, so all Calgary relatives would remark on this. I first met her when she and Louie with the four girls came to Calgary on holidays. She had a lovely smile and was so very nice. She remembered the aunt from living in Calgary and was and then visiting Aunt Susie and Uncle Jim in Vancouver. As I grew over and we saw each other more, we had more in common, and I remember her taking me to the cave with Louie and friends. I've never been in a nightclub before, so it was a different experience. She was a relative the Calgary clan thought of with great respect and love. We will miss you, June. Hi, I'm Paula, Aunt June's niece. I'm speaking for myself and my sister Joanne. Uh, we have great memories. Uh, living down in the States for many years, anytime we came up to Vancouver, we had to go see Aunt June. Uh, not only to see her, but get her a great cup of coffee. And if we didn't want a coffee, we could have a tea of Maria and get caught up on all you cousins. She knew everything about everybody. Uh, truly, her house was always open, as you all know, with all her parties. You could drop in. She always had a smile on her face. Truly a warm heart. A special auntie, for sure. Um, we enjoyed uh, many visits with, or trips to Birch Bay when the men were out fishing. Um, and with the loss of Uncle Louie, she is now with him. Rest in peace, Aunt June. And with Sabina. Uh, your heart and uh, pain you have gone through in life, let you be joyous in heaven with them all. Uh, definitely a smile on her face, I know. Love you guys and sorry for your loss. June Borovich was Auntie June to me. Her brother-in-law was my dad, John Borovich, and sister-in-law, Polly, and I'm Jan Stork. What I cherish most about Auntie June was the relationship of a lifetime I had with her. Exchanging birthday cards, phone calls, and celebrating life's milestones together. And taking trips from Seattle to Vancouver with my family to have visits and to always have a cup of tea. These are the memories I will cherish. Today is a good day that the family has all gathered together, but it's also a sad day that we lay my beloved Aunt June to rest. Hello, my name is Robert, Howard Higgs, number three son, and I would like to share some fond memories of my wonderful Aunt June. She was always the voice of reason and kindness. I knew I could always find love and comfort and a snack when I would drop by for a visit. After all of these years, I never forgot her phone number or her address. It was like a second home to me. Aunt June was very proud of the Haig and Borovich family history. 
She would never hesitate to share her photo albums and family stories. I always cherish the youthful stories of her and my dad and of all the other siblings and cousins and relations. There's always a room full of great toys for all of the cousins to play with when the clan would gather together over the holidays. Nana was still alive and living in the basement suite and she would provide delicious baking treats to all. So many cousins, so much fun. In the mid nineties, I will never forget when my dad brought my aunt June to Canberra River for a visit and we decided to make a fire on the beach. My intoxicated Nufi neighbor wanted to tag along and he sat himself on the same log as Aunt June and started to hit on her. I could tell Dad and Aunt June were getting frustrated, so I positioned myself between Aunt June and the Nufi on the log. Aunt June is one of the last of an amazing wartime generation. Such a lovely, beautiful, kind, decent, respected woman. I will dearly miss her. Rest in peace. You'll never be forgotten. I love you. I miss you. Okay, go ahead. Hey, everybody. Uh, it's your cousin Steve here. I'm obviously in uh, peak fishing season, hence the good clothes and the summer haircut. Nobody's supposed to see me right now. Anyway, just a short little note here to let you guys know that me and my group over here, we're all thinking of you in this time. This year, uh, your mom was a real nice lady. As you know, I spent lots of time around your house when I was younger, and uh, your mom always made me feel welcome. I was always appreciative for that. Love all you guys. One quick little story it was when you guys came over to uh, Alberni the one time in the summer like you used to do for vacations. And we were going to Sprout Lake and uh, there's this hill. You know, we're going up to the lake, there's this big hill you we go up and it flattens off real abruptly at the top. And all the locals know you gotta slow down. And of course, we're in our old 66 wagon with a 396. So my mom's driving and she's talking to your mom and not paying attention to the road. We went and barreled up that hill way too fast. And of course, we got to the top and we got airborne and all us kids are in the back and we thought it was a ride. We're laughing our heads off. And my mom was okay because she was hanging on the steering wheel, but poor old, aunt, poor old Auntie June, she, uh, pre seatbelt days, she flew up into the roof so freaking hard. She smashed her head pretty good, probably put a dent in the car. But, uh, she uh, thought, put her hand on her head, and cobwebs for a few minutes on her head. She, was, she hurt herself. But after about 30 seconds, she said, what the hell? And she started laughing with the rest of us. We all had a real good laugh. It was just one of those times that uh, I remember. And, uh, lots of good little stupid stories like that. Side note, it may or may not have been the trip where Greg threw his underpants out the back of the window and landed on the guy's windshield in the car behind us. So uh, anyway, lots of good stories. And your mom, your, I loved your mom. She always made me feel good hanging around with you guys. And, uh, I miss you all. You're all dear in my heart. Even Ken. <laughs> and uh, well, that's it. That's the little message for me and my group. We're all thinking of you over here. Hi, I just want to give a few memories I had my Aunt June. She's always such a classy, elegant lady. And she used to have some really, we used to have a lot of fun at her house and some crazy parties. I remember one in particular, we were at a friend's wedding that night and we left early so we could come to Aunt June's, I think it was her 50th party. And we thought our friends were drunk at that wedding. We got there and people wearing album covers on their heads and band heels over their heads and just a wild and crazy party. And, but Aunt June was always calm and reserved and, uh, and just, it was always a great, fun place to go, and that's what I'm going to remember about her. Hey, it's hard to choose just one memory of Auntie June because she was more than an aunt to me. She was like my surrogate grandmother. Uh, I will share that when I was in college, 
I was taking a history of Canada course and my topic for my paper was the history of childbirth in Canada and Auntie June was my interviewee and she shared that when she was born premature in 1928 they put her in the oven because there was no such thing as incubators back then and that memory itself is uh, pretty hysterical uh, but also the opportunity to spend quality time with Auntie June is what I will carry with me. So I remember the first time I met Aunt June. It would have been about seven years ago at Walter's 70th birthday party. And it was held in Walter's backyard. And the entire family was there. Amanda and I had just started dating. And I hadn't met anybody in the family. So this was a good opportunity to meet the entire clan in one big hoorah first person that I felt comfortable with was June and uh, we had a good good day full of laughter and she told me quite a few stories of her youth and growing up and uh, it made me smile and laugh that day I learned that she was full of integrity and I would definitely see that through the next seven years getting to know her and her humor and what I define as being a firecracker. Integrity and strength were her strong suits and it was a pleasure and an honor to have known her. Hi, I'm Richard Stork. I'm Jan Stork's son. Jan is one of John Borovich's uh, daughters. Um, I will never forget Auntie June and in particular an evening that I had uh, with her when I was on a work trip with NetJets Aviation. I landed into Vancouver, uh, took a cab over to Burnaby and spent a couple of hours with her uh, one evening just talking and sharing stories and memories. And, and she shared a lot about family history. And it's just that particular, that evening that I will never forget. She holds such a special place in my heart. Uh, may those of you find peace and comfort during this time. Thank you, God bless. When I think about my grandma, I think about how um, caring and loving and sweet she always was. She welcomed me into the family when I was just a little girl with open arms and that kind of kindness that I'll just never forget. She always made me feel so welcome. She'd always have a hot cup of tea waiting for me and usually something sweet to go along with it. I love nothing, nothing more than to just uh, sit around the table and uh, just talk and share stories. Um, she once told me, uh, though, that the hardest part of getting old was watching um, your loved ones and families leave you as years go by. And uh, she saved this little uh, takeaway gift from a memorial that she had gone to at one point um, and saved it for me, knowing my love for tea. And I'd like to share it with you now. It came with a little tea bag and a little note here, and it's called Tea Time. I wish we could sit down together and drink a cup of tea, but since we can't, when you drink this one, I hope you'll think of me. <sighs> Thank you, Grandma, I love you. This one's for you. Rest in peace, love you. So when I close my eyes and I think of memories of Grandma, um, so many come up, obviously. Uh, but the first one that came up for me uh, is she was babysitting me when I was young, probably close to five. And I, I took a hard right along the corner and uh, got a scar. So she was pretty panicked and um, I, I think I ended up having to go get stitches that day. But um, it just reminds me that, that she's always been there for me. Uh, <laughs> maybe not through always the best times, but even in the worst times that uh, I've gone through. She's, she's always been there for me and um, she's always just, what endures for me is just how sweet and supportive she is. Um, and she was all the way uh, for me up, up until the end. Um, we were together for a good while, um, obviously with me living uh, with, uh, with grandma and um, 
near the end there, um, we were together with the COVID so much, uh, she was calling me her best friend a lot. And sometimes she might have said, oh, that's kind of sad. And <laughs> maybe I agreed too, but either way, it was definitely true for that time. So I'm just glad I was able to support her the way that, the way that she tried to support me. And um, I'm going to miss her. I love her so much. So... One thing that I think about a lot when I think of grandma is how um, she used to take us um, all around like her neighborhood in the Heights, going through the alleys, picking up <laughs> bottles and cans from people's recycling. Uh, and then sometimes she would even bring her car around and we would put it all in the trunk with her. Uh, and then uh, at the end, she would uh, reward us by taking us to Dairy Queen.